Today, we're going to be talking to Chad Barr, a really good friend, a mentor, and a coach of mine, someone I've become very fond of and get a chance to work with and really learn a lot from. You see, Chad Barr is an international internet marketing strategist with over 25 years of experience transforming businesses through technology innovation. Now, Chad was born and raised in Israel. Chad arrived in the United States at the age of 22. You're a young man at that time. What happened? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so only friends can say that and get you to laugh like get you to laugh at yourself. So Chad determined he wanted to capture the American dream. So he found uh, his own technology company called CB Software Systems, and that was in 1987. And he quickly became a global sought after software developer, mentor, and strategies. I remember meeting Chad also at the uh, Alan Weiss conference, the million dollar conference in Atlanta. And that's why I really f I first met you. I was really impressed with your talk and the things that you were doing, especially for the, a lot of the experts there as well. Today, however, Chad works as the president of the Chad Bar Group, which spans multiple continents with clients in the UK, Italy, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and across the United States. Chad has helped clients leverage the web to dramatically transform their business and establish a powerful web presence. His firm, the Chad Bar Group, is recognized as one of the leading strategic internet development organizations in the world. Chad devotes his time to writing, coaching, consulting, speaking, and leading the Chad Bar Group, a prolific writer about the web, marketing, and business strategy. He has published hundreds of articles and several books which teaches how to leverage the web to build your brand and transform your business. When he's not working with his clients, Chad revels in his latest role as grandfather of not one, not two, not three, but four wonderful and of course brilliant grandchildren. A former professional guitarist, Chad especially enjoys playing guitar for his grandchildren who thinks he is the coolest guitarist in the world. And I think that's that's the way it should be, right? Our kids should be ad admiring what we get to do. I know when my grandkids come, they're not here yet. I definitely want to be seen as one of the coolest bass players to them in the world. So, Chad, how are you? Great to be here with you, Gerald. Thanks for the introduction. Looking forward to our session today. Excellent, man. Well, let's get started here. So, Chad, help me understand something. What is it or tell me a little bit about your focus in your business and who are your best clients and what key challenges do they face today? That's a great question. Again, thanks for inviting me to participate in the session today. So the key focus of our business is to help our clients with every aspect of the strategies on the web, how to effectively leverage the web by creating powerful web presence. Notice I said web presence and not website. And very quickly, the distinction I have is that web presence contains three primary things. Number one, what's the strategy behind the web? What's the strategy behind the business? Number two, the remarkable content. What content should be created to effectively position ourselves as experts, as people who attract others to us? And number three, what marketing initiatives should we engage in in order to have the most profound outcome out there? So those are the things that I help my clients focus on. What they struggle with, apparently, is how to, number one, effectively leverage the web, leverage every aspect of social media to increase their thought leadership. And number two, how to effectively create content, especially I refer to it as remarkable content, and what makes the distinction between any piece of content to content that is worthy to be out there and attracts other to you. Excellent, excellent. I know as when I started my business, that was one of the challenges because there's, there's so many different channels in which you can you know, publish content, write content, but you also have a business to run and you have clients to take care of. So you have to definitely figure out how to position yourself to do that. I know you've definitely been helping me personally with that, with my business. And I know you've helped a lot of other people with their business as well. And I think, I know I've definitely been beginning to see a lot of the results of the work that we've been doing together. So when you think about some of the things that you just said, I like the idea of the web presence and the web site you know the di the differentiation there because i think that's really critical to understand so what are some of the key mistakes people make with their websites 
Great question. And again, uh, I have to give you also kudos to elevating your both intellectual property and the way you get your content out there through your books that you've created, your videos, the podcast channels we we help you establish to developing this content. So I appreciate you that. Thank that. you. Some of the key mistakes I find people make, number one, is not effectively leveraging the web presence. They're somewhat silent. They're not getting the word out there. They're not getting the message effectively out there, both through the marketing efforts. And number two, they're not investing resources or energy in creating powerful content. Some of it we mentioned today, whether it's podcasts or videos or books or articles or newsletters, they're not getting their intellectual property, their wisdom, the knowledge, their advice. They're not getting it out there in an effective way that gets others to notice, to be attracted to them. So those are the two primary mistakes among others. Number one, ineffective marketing. And right. number two, ineffective content creation. Excellent. Excellent. And 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 to follow up on that, you know, because obviously having that web presence is critical and having a strategic uh, positioned website is also really critical. But when it comes down to entrepreneurs creating what you would call a million dollar entrepreneur, you know, what's the difference between a million dollar entrepreneur and just some, some of the things that other people do? As I observe some of the top most successful entrepreneurs or thought leaders out there, among other distinctions, the one that jumps at me, the one that I seem to be the most impactful, they're all prolific publishers of remarkable content. So whether it's Tony Robbins or Seth Godin or Malcolm Gladwell, just to mention a few, mm -hmm. if you look at them, they constantly create remarkable content, articles, newsletters, podcasts, videos, books, and they don't stop creating. They don't stop putting out the word out there. So one of my key suggestions to entrepreneurs, to thought leaders, speakers, authors, coaches, they've got to effectively get their content out there and start to raise the bar, as I say, so people notice them and they can get the message out there. Right. Well, I know for me, when I'm, when I'm looking for a coach or a, someone to help me in an area that I need help in, and I did this with you, having someone help me with my podcast or, or my strategy around my website or just some of the different ideas, I go and read their websites. I go listen to, the, to their podcasts, but I also go listen to podcasts that they've been guests on or, or byline articles. And within a week or two or a couple of days of doing that, by the time I go back and talk to the person, if they've done their job, they've already gotten the sale. So it's really a matter of let's just negotiate and figure out how to best work together. And that I've definitely seen that happen in my own business where because of the work we've done and other things that I've done pr prior to us working together of having these things in place that clients who've reached out to me and leveraged my services, my content has already done the work for them and also where the content lives, having it on some you know major sites or being listed on Entrepreneur Magazine or, or things like that. It's, it's really critical. And in fact, where do great ideas come from and, and what do we need to do to get them to, to constantly get them just for this idea of content generation? I love this question. I get asked the question quite often. I've written on that a lot. I have an article, actually I have an infographic out there that illustrate 25 ideas of where ideas come from. But one of my favorite thing is, especially when I speak publicly or, or, or not, I turn to the audience and I say, can you share with me quickly, what are some of the top challenges you are facing right now that if you wave the magic wand, all those challenges would disappear? Then I turn to the flip chart and as people start to shout out from the audience, challenge number one, challenge number two, I start to write it on the flip chart. And right. then I pause after a whole page, two or three is filled with challenges that I shared from the audience. And then I turn to them, I pause, and I say, if you ever wonder where my greatest ideas come from, they, they actually come from you. You know. So <laughs> oftentimes my suggestion is ask yeah. your own clients, ask your own prospects, what are some of the challenges that you're facing that you wish to, to be able to not only address, but eliminate? Right. And your clients, your prospects, I believe will generate the most powerful, the most impactful ideas for you to think about content that you should start creating to help them. So that's just yes. one among 25 other ideas, but the most effective one is to go after our clients, to go after our prospect and ask them what are the challenges that they are facing 
amazing ideas will come up in that conversation. That's a great idea, especially to hear it from the client's mouth or from potential client's mouths, you know, what they're really struggling with and what's going on and then write articles and do podcasts and things around those topics that would address their questions and concerns is, is a really good idea. I'm exactly. going to look up the, I'm gonna have to look up them and write myself a note to look up the 25 items that you have on the uh, infograph, or maybe we can add it to the notes on this, uh, on, on this interview. You know, actually, uh, I'll tell you what, just to kind of demonstrate uh, the power of technology, I'm going to try to share my screen with you very quickly. Uh, let me do this right now. Here we go. Let me make sure you have access to share. Okay. Good. Uh, actually, you don't need to because my technology yeah. can override this. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at this right now, Gerald, you could probably see, uh, hopefully on the screen, yeah. uh, one of my infographic. This is the infographic I refer to. Where do ideas come from? 21 insights to accelerate your creative flow. Number one books. What are the books that you're reading right now? in your library or outside your library that yeah. will stimulate ideas. Publication, what publication, Wall Street Journal, Inc. Magazine, and so on. Your own yeah. curiosity, ask questions to develop the sense of developing those ideas. Are you observing, what are you observing out there that will stimulate ideas for you to create? What are you examining? Question that question, basic assumption. I love when I travel, because that yeah. always generates so many ideas to write on. Surrounding yourself with the genius, I refer to it. Surround yourself with great thinkers who challenge you. I don't want to go through the whole thing right now. It's the visual that I've created with my team to help my clients stimulate their own ideas so what they can write about. That's a great visual. I like the drawings. Uh, it, it's really creative what, you, what you've created there. Yeah, we definitely have to share that. In fact, you just showed, showed something that kind of leads into my next question, which is how do you create instant credibility on the web? Right, because that's one of the things that we're trying to do when we're, you know, sharing content, writing books, or putting things out there is we're trying to generate or create instant credibility. How do you do that? How do how do how should we do that? I'm gonna to try to use my own technology right now to demonstrate. So let me just pull out one of my visuals here. Okay. I'm, I'm a huge believer in, in the power of a visual because I always say a picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah. Uh, so rather than trying to explain it in words, we can oftentimes just show a visual. I refer to it as transformation visual, which is not only a book I've written on transformation visual, but I'm gonna show you one of those visuals right now. And the okay. whole concept here, let me just bring it up quickly. Here we go. Okay. Hopefully you could see that on the screen right now. Yep, I can see so it. So this is one of the visuals that I've created, transformation visual. How do we create instant credibility? Again, not to dive deep into that because that's in my book, it's on the website. Five things. Number one, your client list. The client list that are on your website and the more the merrier. If I right. go to a website and I look at the person's client's list and it shows one, two or three or none, it makes me wonder. But if I look at the website and I see 50, 100 uh, clients that are listed there, in addition to testimonial, which is the next thing ab above it, that absolutely creates instant credibility. We say, oh my God, this person has not only so many clients, but so many powerful testimonials. Right. Results. What's the outcome, the results that those clients have achieved by virtue of working with you? Very, very powerful way to establish credibility. And the last two things, case studies and your own intellectual property, your content that you're creating is an incredible way of establishing that credibility and making sure that when people show up to your website, yeah. they say, wow, this is the person I've been looking for to help me resolve the challenges that I'm facing in, in my personal life or, of course, in my business. Right. Well, it also kind of leads to the next idea of taking your website seriously. So I've heard you talk about that in our conversations when you said, hey, if you don't take your site seriously, why should other people do that? Can you talk about that concept of taking your website seriously? Absolutely. And that's absolutely complements what we already talked about to some extent. If you're not taking your site seriously, not only oftentimes it portrays itself through the look and feel of your website, but the key thing is what content is out there? How powerful is that content to help your clients resolve the challenges that they are facing? And what I found it is to me somewhat obvious, the people that are taking their site, their business seriously, are investing their time, their resources in creating powerful ways to help their clients, to engage with their clients. So if you're not taking your site seriously is what I'm saying, right. why should your clients take you seriously? <laughs> 
You've got to take your site, you've got to take your web presence seriously, starting with your strategy, your content, and of course your marketing initiative to make sure that you show the way to your clients of how to walk the talk and talk the walk. Exactly. Now you've also mentioned something else called a internet strategic profile. Can you explain that a little bit more for me? Absolutely. So again, just the power of visuals. So here we go. I refer to this as the marketing strategic profile. But for example, how would you rank your website? Is it non-existent, which I say, give it a zero? Is it somewhat competitive, distinct, or breakthrough in comparison to other sites out there? As you look at all those labels I put on the left, website, your blog, your community, your articles, your social media, it helps create a profile that basically, based on your profile, are you a one, are you a two or three? Some items may be a zero, some items may be a one, some items may be a two or three, but that immediately establishes the profile. And the key marching orders come through this profile, where do you need to be six months or now, a year from now? The key here is to start to create a movement to the right of the chart that moves you from a zero to a one, from a one to a two and two to a three. That is the strategic marketing blueprint that I've helped create and go through with my clients. And then my other favorite question is to ask them, if you look at some of the people that you admire, the most successful out there, what would you rank them? What would be their strategic profile from your perspective? I believe you will find out that when you think about the most successful ones out there, I believe that you will rank them at most likely a two or three. The key outcome from looking at that, that you've got to think about how do I move myself towards the right? Because if you're not doing anything, you're going to start moving to the left. I also noticed as you've brought up the various visuals, you kind of were embedded into the uh, into, into the image. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure, I won't get into all the details of the technology there, but I thought that was really cool. I've never seen that one before. <laughs> well, thank you, Gerald. That's part of the technology I help my clients start to move into, because as you probably could tell, I'm using a high-end camera right now, yep. I'm using some good lights, and I'm using a good microphone, all connected to a piece of software that allows me to override things very quickly. I love Zoom as we are on right now. I use it all the time, but I find some limitation or maybe some aspect of Zoom being cumbersome. I use a piece of software on the Mac called Ecamm, and Ecamm okay. allows me to very easily integrate those visuals. And the nice thing about this visual, I can turn myself on and off. For example, if I bring up any of those visuals I showed you before, I can move myself anywhere on the screen. I can move myself here, resize myself, you know, and things like that. So very powerful things to do. Yeah including our own branding. If I want to bring out, for example, my logo and things like that, it's very easy for me to do so with this right. piece of software. Yeah, I remember us talking about that and you showing that. And I think it is, I think it, it blends in because I think where we are now in work, right? I, was, I had a meeting earlier today with a young lady that I met through my LinkedIn group, Productivity Intelligence, and we had an introductory call. And she was talking about that now their one of their her projects within her business running the P, in the PMO was was the hybrid model and that they will be going into the office a couple of days a week but the company overall has realized how uh productive the people have been working from home and that they are now building that into their structure so they're redesigning and and, and restructuring their real estate they're realigning how office hours work, they're realigning all these different things. So internet presence and Zoom presence and all these different tools that I'm learning from you are still extremely critical, even I believe as part of the web strategy or the strategic profile. You're absolutely right. Especially for us as coaches, strategists, yes. speakers, authors, we want to come across, make sure that we look professional. And right. the, the technology today, you know, you're using a high-end microphone, you invested in amazing technology, you invested in the relationship with us, and you're doing some great work. And by the way, here's the thing. If I want to turn on the logo right now, I can put on my branding here. I can resize the logo, put it on the bottom right, bottom left. So this technology makes it so much easier to do that by branding ourselves and getting the message out there as effectively and powerfully as possible. Exactly. Now, let's talk about social media. How do you suggest we leverage social media as effectively as possible for our businesses as well? It depends on your clients. The first question I oftentimes ask my clients, are your clients on the social media channels that you're trying to be effective and active on? So for example, if you're thinking of participating more on Facebook or on Twitter 
or on LinkedIn or whatever is the platform, Instagram, right. are your clients that you're trying to attract on those platforms? You've got to do some investigation. If the answer is absolutely yes, my clients are on LinkedIn, then I've got to be on LinkedIn. And in my situation, my clients are on LinkedIn, my clients are on Facebook, so I'm in a good situation. There are some industry that their clients are not necessarily on Facebook. So I would suggest for them not to invest their energy and time or dollars or whatever resources into Facebook. But yet, if their clients happen to be on LinkedIn, invest more of your time, more of your energy there. And then two things. Number one, what are the relationships we are trying to create with those people on those social media? And then going back to the content piece and the marketing piece, what are we doing to get our content effectively out there that will get noticed and hopefully people say, wow, this article from Gerald was just amazing. What else he's doing? Better yet, let me contact him because it sounds like he's the guy I've been looking for to help my business grow. I've used a lot of those strategies myself and even starting a LinkedIn group. You know, I've, I have a Facebook group and, and so on, but LinkedIn is really where my business comes from. A few years ago, I started a LinkedIn group and it started with 10 people. Now I have about 560, almost 70 people and it's growing. And some of my major clients are coming from that group or a part of that group. And it's, uh, I'm, it's, I'm starting to see a lot of great benefits of doing that. So I think it's incredible. And it's interesting. The next question I want to ask you is about trademarks. And I literally had a phone call, right, literally before we had a conversation about a conversation you and I had, which is with my new book, Workplace Jazz, and the and the mark and the image behind me, getting that trademark for my podcast and so on, of finalizing that and getting it where it's all finalized and everything. And I have the certification, um, but trademarks. You know, why are trademarks so important, especially I know you have the trademark Create Global Digital Empire Program. Why is that so important to your business and why are trademarks so critical? One of my dear clients who is actually a trademark attorney, Eric Pelton. So not only a dear client of mine, but I actually use Eric's services to trademark my own keywords. Even my logo is trademark. It is so critical to protect our work through trademark and through copyright. But for example, let me just share a very quick story with you. Several years ago, I trademarked Creating Global Digital Empire, which the essence of that is what we talked about today, how to take our intellectual property, how to take our thoughts, our experiences, and get it out there in variety of formats. So I came up with not only the concept of Creating Global Digital Empire, which has been very successful through the programs I've been creating for my clients, but I decided, of course, to trademark it. One of my clients called me and said several years ago, have you seen the article in the National Speaker Association about how creating your global digital empires? And I said, no, I haven't. He said, you'll be surprised that I thought it came from you because I know you always talk about how to create your global digital empire, but someone else has written it. I'm opening the National Speaker Association magazine, and I see an article about how to create your global digital empire. Lo and behold, the person who has written the article was not me. He interviewed me a year before for his podcast. The topic of the podcast a year before was how to create global digital empire. And he mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, I'm pleased to interview today Chad Barr, who's an expert in how to create a global digital empire. And for the next hour, he's asking me question, how to craft and create a global digital empire. Now comes the power of the trademark. Not only I picked up the phone and called him, which he seemed kind of surprised, but I said to him, did you realize that that has been trademarked by me and you've not mentioned in your article anything about the fact that number one, it has been trademarked by me, you're using the concept that was trademarked, you've not mentioned anything about me. So it's not an issue of an ego, it's an issue more of protecting our work and making sure that people are not using it. And I put him on notice that from this point forward, if he ever were to use that concept again, he has to give the proper attribution to me. So what's the learning lessons here? You've got to start protecting your work. Even, for example, raising the bar, which is the name of my newsletter, bar being spelled uh, B-A-R-R, that is trademark. When you start thinking about trademarking, I do suggest for you to put the TM or SM for trademark or service mark next to the keyword. Once you apply and you get the approval from the USPTO office, that's when the TM or SM changes into an R, which says it has been approved, it has been protected, it's assigned to you. And as I said before, if we look at some of the top thought leaders in the world, not only they're prolific publishers of remarkable content, 
Yeah. Most of them, if not all of them, protect their work, but trademarking their concepts and so on. Exactly. You know, we've covered a lot of ground here in our in our talk here. Again, I love the visuals and a lot of the things that that we've talked about, you've really helped me with as well. But I have two more questions for you. And so and one of them is, how do we create our million dollar blueprint for success? Because, you know, when we're building our businesses, we want our businesses to have a purpose and a meaning, but we also want to, to make a decent profit with them. And especially during this time of COVID and everything else, how do we do that now? You know, let me bring up the visual again, Gerald. So going back to this marketing blueprint, and by the way, I, I would acknowledge million dollars is somewhat arbitrary. Yeah. You could increase your business by 50,000, 100,000, 300,000, you know, 700,000, hopefully a million. The key here is to increase your revenues and right. reduce your labor intensity in the process. So how can we increase and resize our business, but not necessarily work harder and more crazy like? Uh, so right. that, that's the key. If you look at this marketing blueprint that I shared before, my suggestion for my clients is to pick out the top three to six key things. And of course, whether it's through the help from someone like myself, or for them to spend some time to look and say, where am I investing my resources? Is it through my website? Is it through my content creation? Pick out three to six of those. And then once you do so, how do I effectively market it to my clients? So in order to increase the revenues, in order to get into what I call a million dollar web present, you've got to pick out through the six of them, start to move it to the right by improving it. And then before even doing that, what is the one key things that you should focus on today in order to have the biggest impact on your business? First, the biggest impact on your clients. Once right. you figure that out, I believe then you can move into number two, number three, number four, and that would have the biggest impact, I believe, on the success of your business. Wow, wow, that's a great idea. That's a great, uh, a great tool as well. And hopefully, people who listen to this can take a look at that and 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 again reach out to you to to learn more about how they can work with you uh, around that. Now, obviously, over the years, you have worked with a lot of people. You've written you know a lot of articles, the books, everything. If you were now to take the wisdom that you have now, what advice would you give your younger self with what you know now that you didn't know when you got started? <laughs> Love the question. Great question. I, I thought about this question quite a lot. And I said, you know, 25, 30 years ago, not to re reveal my age, what would I have done differently? Number one, I would say I would publish like crazy. And that's something I've not done at the beginning of my career. And what I mean by publishing, start to write articles, publish them through a newsletter, through a blog, become much more prolific in creating podcasts, creating videos, getting it out there. So number one, it's all about, from my perspective, publishing. Yeah. Number two, I would speak as much as possible, whether through interview like this one with you, Gerald, more interviews like that, publicly speaking through, you know, National Speaker Association, but any opportunity that I would have to speak and present my ideas, my knowledge, my wisdom to help others, that would be the one thing I would have promoted big time at the beginning of my career. And again, I have to admit, I have not pushed it as hard at the beginning of my career. And right. number three is to effectively engage in marketing initiative. Because if you're not marketing yourself, if you're not marketing the products, no one's going to hear about you. So right. the key here is to learn to effectively become what some of my clients or myself would refer to as become a marketing machine to effectively get the message out there towards your target audience and attract them to you to get the help that they need. Well, Chad, thank you so much for just all the, the insights and wisdom that you have uh, provided. I'm sure those four grandkids are gonna, gonna not only think that you are the coolest guitarist, but the coolest marketing strategist as well. And uh, you know, if, if people wanna get in touch with you to learn more about you, where can they go? Thank you, Gerald, and I can't wait to share the stories of the grandkids with you one day. <laughs> Very simple. The Chad Bar Group is our website, T-H-E Chad Bar, C-H-A-D-B-A-R-R group.com. Or they can go to my blog, chadbar.com. And then, of course, all the contact information is right there. We're all over the social media, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. But probably the easiest thing is to go to our website and then click on Contact Us. It's all over my website. And, and thank you again for 
the opportunity to speak to you, to your audience, and for all the great work that you're doing. I am proud to, to be part of it, to be involved in all the great things we're doing together. Excellent. Well, I appreciate it. And Chad, so for, for, for those that have been listening, you've been listening to Workplace Jazz and our guest today, Chad Barr, who's an amazing internet business strategist. And if you really want to grow your business and your web presence, not just a website, but your web presence, you really should check out the Chad Barr Group. Again, Chad, thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to continuing our journey together and uh, for me to learn from you the things that I've been do doing and just taking my business to the next level. And thanks for all the wisdom and insight that you were able to share with us today. Gerald, thank you.